why Facebook IPO turned into a disaster. Failure is inevitable, is a well-known truth when you just began a career. But what to do when you have built a famous successful company and unexpectedly fall down after IPO? I'm betting you are ready to name the company we are going to speak about. Facebook IPO stock fell immediately after its opening, causing a drastic downhill movement of share prices, over 40% for a couple of months to come. Some call it the fall worthy of Icarus, but are there any reasons for such strong words? And who is to blame for this record IPO failure? There could be only one way to answer for sure, by getting to know what happened. Historical overview, what happened? Let's go back to 2012 year. Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook's CEO and significant shareholder announced that it was time for the company to go public. The reason for this decision is simple, to help investors and employees to have some liquidity of its assets. However, he also emphasized his greatest desire, not just to make Facebook a public company, but to make people more open and connected, as the rationale behind Facebook was to connect the world. So, on this special day, on behalf of everyone at Facebook, I just want to say to all the people out there who use Facebook and our products, thank you. The long-awaited moment came when Mark Zuckerberg signed the digital screen to give way to a new era. Historically, when a privately owned company opens its doors out to the public for the first time, it does so by making an initial public offering, IPO. In which case, it offers shares to the public to buy at a particular price and facilitates that through an investment bank. This was exactly what Facebook did. The company shares were initially priced at $28 per share. But at the IPO, it went as high as $38 per share. According to Facebook, the reason for increasing the price of the share was because they believed it should do better. So, Facebook upped the range for its share price from $28 to $35 to $35 to $38 a share just because they needed a price for perfection for the share. Briefly, as had been expected, Facebook's shares enjoyed a pop, rising 11% in early trading. After this IPO stage, the company was expecting an IPO worth $100 billion, which would make it the biggest IPO in recent history. Michael Farr just named the real reason. Facebook represents value, there's no question about that. How much value does Facebook represent and how much value will public uh, uh, investors assigned to it. Probably a lot more than is there. People will pay a big premium. People will pay a big premium because they feel like they're buying something that's working now that will work better in the future. He was not the only one who thought so. According to Ken Marlin, managing partner of Marlin and Associates, a leading technology-focused investment bank, pricing high-growth tech stocks is an art, mixed with some science. The underwriters got the price right, but got the value wrong. For perspective, Facebook's valuation was close to 100 times last year's profits, significantly higher than tech giants Apple and Google that make far more money. Facebook versus Nasdaq, who's to blame? On the day of the IPO, the trading started at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, but about 30 minutes were delayed until 11.30. This was where the trouble began. This delay was a result of some technical issues with the Nasdaq exchange. It turns out that some technical issues hampered the first try. And it wasn't good enough news for everyone, especially investors. As a result, some orders could not go through. Or worse, the technical issues must have confused investors such that they could no longer tell if their demands were successful or not. Despite this glitch, the initial trading rose to $45, which compelled the underwriters to buy back the shares in a frantic bid to support the price and possibly salvage it from falling drastically. Sadly, the initial public opening, which was envisioned to be the biggest in recent history, somehow turned into a tremendous financial disappointment, as most media described it. Some media claim in their reports that the Nasdaq's action with the IPO was a huge gamble. 
Owing to the 30-minute delay, investors were uncertain of how much of the company they had acquired. They had to withdraw their investments which contributed to the falling price. The Nasdaq's electronic trading platform could not handle the increased trade volume, thus generating an economic and financial state of emergency. Nasdaq's glitch cost investors approximately $500 million, according to the Wall Street Journal. Moreover, the Securities and Exchange Commission charged Nasdaq with securities laws violations resulting from its poor systems and decision-making during the initial public offering, IPO, and secondary market trading of Facebook shares. Nasdaq has agreed to settle the SEC's charges by paying a $10 million penalty, the largest ever against an exchange. The role of Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs Investment banks fought over the spot to take a company as massive as Facebook public. JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs, two more investment banks which participated in the Facebook IPO deal. Morgan Stanley won this position as the lead underwriter for Facebook's initial public offering. At some point, both Facebook and Morgan Stanley had to make a public revelation. Legally, companies are expected to share all available information needed to influence an investor's decision about stock buying. But with things going south, there had to be some amendments. However, the problem was that when you file for an amendment, you need to release some information relating to its public birth date, including information concerning how the use of mobile devices eats into revenue. In addition, Facebook was supposed to call some research analysts who had detailed information about the failing anticipations. However, when an enterprise amends its first public birth date, the whole document can be filed a second time without highlighting any specific changes. Commenting on the IPO failure, a renowned Wedbush securities analyst and investor, Michael Pachter told AFP news agency that, I think that the underwriters convinced Facebook to offer too much stock. Morgan Stanley's blame comes from the fact that they withheld information from the public. According to 32 other underwriters who signed the deal, Morgan Stanley had a tight control of information, decisions and allocations of shares, Morgan Stanley shut them out. It turns out that Morgan Stanley moved to stabilize the situation on the first day of trading when the stock failed to proceed as anticipated. Many people experienced and incurred huge losses with Facebook's decision to go public. And experts attributed to overhype, withholding of relevant information from the public, while some others say it was the glitch from the Nasdaq. Whatever the case, people will continue to lick their emotional and financial wounds for quite some time. Finally, it would serve companies better if they consider sharing timely information with the public as regards their products, IPO. Facebook, fake book, fail book, face palm, pick your favorite euphemism for the epic fail tepid offering on Friday and don't hesitate to stay in touch with us to have finger on the pulse with crucial lessons from the top companies and make your experience only successful. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video please like and consider subscribing. Also, share this video with your friends if you feel so, and please, put your opinion down in the comments. If you want to know more about the finance, please, check the links below.